Example four, in a family with three children, excluding multiple births, what is the probability of having two boys and one girl in that order? Assume that a boy is as likely as a girl at each birth. All right, so we are trying to figure out that if there is this family that has three children, okay, no twins or no triplets, um, we're trying to figure out what is the probability of having two boys and one girl in that order. Okay, so we're going to do what we just did in the coin example in example three. Okay, we're going to make a tree diagram. It's very visual and it helps us map out what happens at each birth. And then you can easily uh, see the sample space. Okay. Um, again here, birth order matters. Okay, so that's why the tree diagram is going to be very, very helpful. Okay, so let's say, or let's notate a uh, first child. Okay, so the first child, remember, there's a 50-50 chance. It's either a boy or a girl. Okay, so we'll write that down. Those are our possibilities. Okay, so then the second child comes along. Okay, it could be either a boy or a girl. Okay. So if the first child was a boy, okay, that doesn't have any impact on the second child. The second child could still either be a boy or a girl, okay? Or if the first child were a girl, okay, that has no impact on the second child, okay? The second child could either be a boy or a girl, okay? And then finally, we get to the third child, okay? Same kind of idea here, okay? If we look at what we've done so far, okay, so if we follow this path, okay, the first child was a boy, and then the second child was a boy, okay, then again, those prior two births have no impact on the third birth, okay, the third child could either be a boy or a girl, okay, so from doing this, okay, we have ended up with a couple of the possibilities, okay, so if you just follow the separate paths, um, we have first child boy, second child boy, third child boy, okay? So one possibility is that for, again, in, taking birth order into consideration here, it could be boy, 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 okay? If you follow the other path that was forged here, it could be boy, boy, girl, okay? So that could be the next one, okay? So then we just keep doing this, okay? So now let's go back to the first child. Okay, we still have a couple of possibilities. So if the first child was a boy and the second child was a girl, so now we're going down this path, okay? The first two births again have no impact on the third child. Okay, so the third child could again be a boy or a girl. Okay, so if you just follow the paths here, okay? So if we do this particular path, so we go boy, girl, and then if we go this path, it'll go boy, girl, boy, okay? If we follow this path instead, boy, girl, and then girl, okay? That's the next possibility, okay? So these are the four options that result from the first child being a boy, okay? We're gonna do the same thing if the first child was a girl, okay? All right, we've already branched out the second child. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and branch out the third child, okay? So um, regardless of whether, you know, the first child was a girl and if the second child was either a girl or a boy, okay, those births have no impact on the third child, okay? So if you follow the path that the first child was a girl and the second child was a boy, the third child could still be either a boy or a girl, okay? And so same thing, okay, if the first child was a girl and the second child was a girl, prior, those births have no impact on the third birth. The third child could still either be a boy or a girl, okay? So now we're gonna follow all the paths that were formed, okay? So we've got girl, boy, boy, okay? So that's another possibility, girl, boy, boy. And then we've got girl, boy, girl, 
And then let's follow the other path. So here we've got girl, girl, boy. And then lastly, we've got girl, girl, girl. So all girls. OK, these are all the possible outcomes. OK, um, for three children okay, and notating the birth order. OK, so for our sample space. OK, this is it. OK, so I'm actually going to I'll write it down here if you want. OK, sample space. These are all the possible outcomes. And notice I'm using S for sample space when I write down my sample space. OK, so here I'm just going to jot down what we figured out from our tree diagram. But again, it's very visual, really helps you see what's going on and to make sure you counted all the different possibilities. OK. All right. So once we get this down, we still have to go answer the question. OK. All right. One more. So girl, girl, girl. OK, there we go. OK, so I think there's a total of eight if we count them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight possible outcomes. I'll just write that down so we can use that information. OK. So eight outcomes in the sample space. So what we're trying to figure out, it says, what is the probability of having two boys and one girl in that order? OK, so if we look at this, OK, look at all the possible outcomes. We want two boys and one girl in that order. Here it is. OK, none of the other seven outcomes fit that bill. OK. So the probability of this happening, okay, remember your bottom number is going to be the total number of possible outcomes. There's eight different outcomes. Only one of these eight outcomes is the order boy, boy, girl. Okay, so the probability of this happening is one eighth, okay, which is the same as 0.125. Okay, all right, let's look at example five. It kind of piggybacks off of this example, okay. In example five, same thing. You've got your family with three children, excluding multiple births. What is the probability of having two boys and one girl in any order? OK, and again, you're going to assume that a boy is as likely as a girl at each birth. OK, so it's the same kind of problem. Same thing as we did up here, but now the birth order doesn't matter. OK, so to solve this or, or to first discuss it and then solve it. What I'm going to do, all of our work is still valid. I am just going to rewrite the, or actually, let's just jot the sample space down here because I don't want to mess with between the two different uh, examples with the work. I don't want to mix them up here. So I'm going to jot down the sample space again. The sample space is still valid. Okay, if the family has three children, these are all the possibilities for birth order. OK, so this is still valid. So I'm just jotting it down again because I don't want to mix up the two as far as the work is concerned. So if you're going back through your notes, you understand what I did. OK, so here we go. Um, girl, 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 ah, girl, girl, girl. There. OK, so we still have our eight possibilities. OK, and when you did this sample space, you took into account um, that birth order matter. Now it doesn't matter. OK. So what we're going to do here, OK, um, we're going to take our sample space and now we're going to look for two boys and one girl. And since the order doesn't matter, you know, you can you, you're going to pick out all the ones that just have two boys and one girl the order doesn't matter. OK, so let's go and highlight out of our sample space which one of these have two boys and one girl. OK. So this one's got three boys. This one fits the bill, two boys and one girl. All right, this one is two boys and one girl. And then this one's two girls. This is two boys and one girl, two girls, two girls, three girls. OK, so all we've got to do now, OK, is, is compute our fraction. OK, the bottom number is going to be eight because there's eight possible outcomes. And we know that three of them, the ones that are highlighted in yellow, um, those three outcomes have two boys and one girl. OK, so the probability is three eighths of that occurring of a family having two boys and one girl in any birth order. 